Oh, well, hello YouTube, I'm Lord Zath, uh, bringing you another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is going to be another shard pull, and I'm kind of excited about this one, because I get to pull void shards, and I don't pull void shards that often. Um, and the two times weekend I did a couple weeks ago, I pulled a few, uh, but I wanted to keep 90 just in case there was a guaranteed summoning event. And guess what, guys? There's a guaranteed summoning event. Funny how that works, doesn't it? So... The guaranteed champion is this dude, Tervold, which is uh, one of the OG uh, smackers. He's a single target smacker. Um, he'll uh, basically just whack everything. Um, the biggest thing, of course, is his juggernaut skill because um, he attacks an enemy twice. The big thing is that his damage is based on the number of buffs that are on him. So the more buffs on your team, the higher the damage will be dealt. Now, that pairs perfectly with this one here, Ancestor's Power, uh, in which case you have an increased attack and increased crit rate, and while you're at it, wind up at increased speed. So you just throw all of these buffs on him uh, just to, to power up this dude here, th th this uh, skill. Um, and yeah, he's got an A1, who cares? Um, <laughs> it's mainly these two that we're looking at, right? So I've been thinking, I've been thinking that I want to rebuild my uh, my clan boss setup, my demon lord setup. And this guy might just be the ticket to getting me a one key ultra nightmare. Uh, we'll see, I'm at a two key right now. Um, but I think I can do I can do a Warcaster with uh, uh, Helicath and Seeker. And then I'm thinking Turvold might be a really good damage dealing champion to add um, to the mix. So I'm kind of looking forward to building him and seeing what I can what I can do with him. And on the way while we're getting there, there's also targeted summoning boosts, which is which is great um, because on top of that, we've got a chance. Where is it over here? We've got a chance at getting this dude, Krisk. Now, Krisk <coughs> is pretty much considered the best champion in the game, like no, number one out of like what 1500 champions in the game or something now it's crazy and what makes him so amazing one is his passive right um he plays a shield every on everybody based on half of his max hp which is ridiculous then also chance of adding a decreased defense and a decreased attack debuff when he's hit so if people want to take him out well, they can, but they're going to become uh, easier to kill, and they're going to do less damage in the following turns. So he's really good in the arena, but he, I mean, he's really good in everything. Um, you can also provoke, uh, and then he defenses and speeds, so that's kind of sexy as well. And then um, we've got ally protect, we've got heal, um, and also he's a buff extender too, because why not? Um, and then his A1 will decrease speed on everybody it's an aoe so i mean just phenomenal champion right you can also get this guy girl the auger which is eh, i've run into problems with him in um doom tower and the big thing about him is he's all about the freeze debuff you need you need freeze to make him really work and come off because if the target's got freeze that he's hitting he gets an extra hit which is kind of nice um, he can also cleanse buffs from enemies, clean them off, or strip, I should say, buffs from enemies. Um, and, you know, he also gets an extra turn out of that, so that's kind of sexy. But the big thing is, you, you know, you're, you're having him attack targets that are freeze. Now, the thing is, freeze reduces the damage that people take, so you reduce the damage people take by freezing them, you are CCing, crowd controlling them, um, and you are getting an extra turn out of the deal here, or an extra hit, I should say. Um, but it's not that that sexy, so I don't know. I might have some fun um, building him. Um, I didn't realize Nekmo is the guarantee, or not guarantee, targeted for uh, Ancients and Sacreds. I missed out on him by two Sacred Shards. Sadness. Oh well. And then there's this guy. And then there's also Ragash, who I did pick up, uh, and I'm pretty happy I have him. He's he's pretty sexy. Uh, all right, so without further ado, we're gonna pull 80 shards here and see uh, what what we get. Now, RSL Helper uh, has been keeping track of my shards and right now thinks that I have an uh, 8% boosted chance 
Is it boosted chance or is it 8% mercy? Uh, void. Here we go. So right now it thinks I'm at 8% and 0.5%, which is your standard. Um, because I haven't had our cell helper actually running on, on this PC uh, while I did my polls two weekends ago. So I did pull a Visix though. So I think I'm pretty far away from Mercy Rule. <clears throat> that said, what the hell? Let's do it and see what we get. It's always the dangerous part of raid is when you're doing the shard pulls, you know? Like, what, what do you pick up here? And it's usually a whole bunch of crap. As you can see, we haven't even picked up an epic yet. Um, so, whatever. Oh boy! Now, it's clan versus clan, which is another reason why I was holding off on uh, doing my pulls until now. Um, I have, I don't think I have Centurion or Harvester, but I've got everybody else. More food, more chickens. Whatever. Cage bound? Ugh. Hey, there's an epic. Suwai first. Okay. That's a new epic for me. Toll if I already have, but it could be a duplicate epic in a, in a um, when I, oh, a legendary. Cardio. Okay. So it's, it's not. It's not Krisk. It's not Krisk, but it's Cardio. Can I pull into his uh, kit? There it is. So he increases ally speed in all battles. Uh, he Allies receive 20% less damage from champions from Demon Spawn, Undead Hordes, Knights Revenant. Whenever an ally attacks, it's 15% to team up with them and join their attack. This champion's attack will default uh, with their default skill. Always join Sissia's attacks if they're... Oh! Oh, he pairs well with Sissia. That's awesome. Can only join allies attack once per turn. Cardio will not team up on ally attacks when they counter attack or when teaming up to attack with another champion. Got it. So that's kind of nice because I don't have an ally attack champion. Uh, so that'll work well. Um, and then we've got increased crit rates, increased crit damage on all, ooh, on all allies, then teams up with all allies who attack. So, oh, oh, oh. Oh, what if I put, what if I pair him with Tervold on uh, on that un, unkillable team? Hmm. Increases the cooldown of the skill by one turn of enemies killed by the attack. Uh, removes all debuffs from. Ooh, it's a stripper. Then places block debuffs and revive on death on all allies for two turns. The revive on death cannot be removed. Okay, so you, now look at this. Boosting Turvold, boosting Turvold. I kind of like this. And his A1 attacks at one enemy, heals all allies by 7.5% of their max HP. Also places True Fear Deep, but for one turn, if the target is Demon Spawn, Undead Hordes, or Night Rev. Okay. That's all right. A little conditional. Now, Sui Firstborn, I don't have. At least I don't think I have her. Oh, no, I, I think I do have her, actually, because she's a Barbarian. I thought that she was... um. I thought that she was a uh, Shadow Pit. Uh, Attacks an enemy, 50% chance of placing decreased defense. And then if you ascend her, she also puts increased attack and increased crit damage on this turn for two turns. If, or on this champion for two turns, if this attack kills an enemy. That's that's a pretty big conditional there. Uh, what's her A2? Attacks all enemies. Okay, decreased attack. So it'd be pretty good in Faction Wars because of that. Um, but, yeah. And then Tolf, I'm pretty sure I already have Tolf. Attacks an enemy two times each hit, reheals this champion by 30%. Attack cannot be critical. And it's all based on HP, he's an HP champ. Attacks an enemy when not attacking bosses, inflicts pure damage and decrease the target's HP to 50%. Inflicts a damage based on this champion's max HP instead and places a stun debuff. For one turn, the target already has less than 50% HP. Okay, so... In pure, pure, and so, okay. So that's kind of nice, actually, if you're clearing out, like, dungeons or waves on the higher end, because decreases target's HP to 50%, just whack. And then after that, stuns um, on the next time it hits. Okay. Also cannot be critical. Decreases the values of all enemy shield bus by 50% start every turn, then increases champion's max HP by the same amount. Oh, this is kind of fun, actually, if you go against somebody that you know is going to be running shields. All right, well, there's Tulf the main, so I got my legendary. It wasn't Krisk, 
sadness. But I did get a new legendary to play with, so that's exciting. Let's continue on and see what else we get. So that was the second uh, second batch of 10. So that was kind of nice. Look, I'm getting a whole... Ooh, uh, Lua. Okay, she's new for me. So that's exciting to see. And I got another Paragon. Now let's see what Lua is all about. I've seen her before, but I haven't, like, I don't really know her that well. Attacks an enemy deals 50% inflicted damage to all enemies if this attack is critical. Okay, so you want to build it for crit. That's an, that's an easy one. Attacks all enemies three times. Each critical hit heals Lua by 22.5% HP. Okay. Attacks enemy decrease targets. Turn. Oh, turn meter manipulator. Will ignore shield and block damage buffs. That's kind of sexy right there. Okay. Yeah, I've run into her on the uh, on Doom Tower hard waves a lot, and she's a pain in the butt to deal with. Okay, so I got Lua. So that's somebody new for me. So that's exciting. All right. So three new people. Range Monger, I think, is a new person for my account too. But he's a rare, so whatever. We'll, we'll see what that means later. I don't really care. Getting a lot of Ash Walkers. All right, I think this is the fifth. I think we're on 50 now. Another Cold Heart. Okay, that's that's only the second Cold Heart I've had on my entire account, and it took me over a year to get my first Cold Heart, guys. Um, abs oh! <laughs> I'm screenshotting this. I'm screenshotting this. Oh my god. Oh my god. I got... I got... Inquisitor Shamil. Oh my god, guys. I got Inquisitor Shamil. Now, he's an epic, um, but I'm excited about him because of the fact that he's fantabulous uh, against Hydra, which is something I've been trying to work up, right? Um, and I know he's going to help me in a lot of other content. So let's take a look at his kit and, and why he's so special. So every critical hit fills this champion's turn meter by 7.5%. Whenever an ally receives fear or true fear from an enemy, this skill instantly removes the debuff and fills the ally's turn meter by 15%. So, you strip away the... the you, this is great against, what is it, the Head of Torment, I think it is? Um, that, that will put a, a true fear on somebody uh, who attacks him. Shamil just comes in and says, nope, you're not doing that. Um, so that's kind of sexy, right? Now, attacks the enemy one uh, three times. Will ignore two... Uh, 20, I can't talk. 25% of the target's defense. Will ignore a further 25% of the target's defense for each buff on this champion. Places true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn if this attack kills an enemy. So that's kind of nice. He goes whack, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Now is where it gets pretty crazy. Uh, att attacks one enemy, 50% chance of decreasing the duration of a random buff on an enemy by one turn. That's kind of sexy. Every time an enemy places a debuff on an, an on an ally, uses this skill against the enemy. Every I'll repeat that. Every time an enemy places a debuff on an ally, uses this skill against that enemy. So we're talking poisons. Boom. Boom, boom. We're talking about uh, provoke. We're talking about decrease attack, block ally skills, all you know, block buffs, all that stuff, right? Um, these counterattacks will only deal 50% of the normal damage and cannot be critical. Okay. Still, it's free damage that you're getting automatically. Just boom, boom, boom. If there are multiple champions in the team of the skill, only one champion. So you can't put multiple Inquisitor Shamels. But I mean, look at this. So he gets a, your guy gets a fear or a true fear. Quizzer Shamil says, nope. And then now places, uh, play, does, does, a, does an attack on the enemy um, just as a result of that. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I'm really looking forward to, I'm really looking forward to building him out. Uh, he's going to be a lot of fun. And then of course, the game's like, here, you haven't had a cold heart in a while. Have two more. Thanks, game. All right, moving along. So we got a we got an awesome uh, legendary. We got an awesome epic. I'm pretty happy so far, but I I want more. Game, I want more. Give me more. Come on. Nope. 
Just a whole bunch of rares. Although, I think... I don't know. I think I got all these guys already. I think this is my 80th, guys. I think this is my 80th. I'm thinking this will be it. On the bottom right, it should do... Uh, do the lightning bolt. Oh, another sky touch, another Harkin great blade. There are so many epics that I am looking for. There are so many epics in this game that I'm looking for. And the game's like, no, here, have another Harkin great blade. Who I'm not going to be using for anything, really. Um, she's a deep rough spreader, weaken. Uh, it's kind of a yawn of an epic. Now, Sky Touched is kind of fun. Um, because she is uh she gives everybody uh hit points and then a lot of people have to decide whether or not to ascend her okay if you don't ascend her then this skill isn't there and all she does is she cleanses she block debuffs and then she puts a revive on death on everybody on a four turn cooldown and then her a1 is a simple aoe attack and then it heals by 15 percent of damage inflicted if the champion is less than 50%. Also boost the champion's turn meter by 20% uh, instead if he's got 50% or higher HP. So some people like to just not uh, ascend and unlock the passive and just keep going into A1 and A2. The passive is where it gets interesting. It damages the champion by 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn. A lot of people don't like that. Uh, it heals all allies except this champion equal to half of the lost HP. Okay, places a 30% decrease speed debuff on this champion for one turn at the start of each turn. Also has a 50% chance of a fear debuff. So a lot of people don't like this because obviously decreased speed slows her down and fear makes it so that she could lose a turn. Now, the reason why I think this is important is because um, if she's damaging herself by 10% of her max HP, you don't want her damaging herself all the way to death really quickly so the 30 percent decrease speed i think is important the unfortunate thing is it's balanced by that 50 percent chance of placing a fear so you would need somebody that could cleanse that off if you want to be able to use her every turn okay now um go back to here heals by 15 percent of damage inflicted if this champion has less than 50 percent hp so what this does is essentially it changes her from a turn meter booster okay when you're just doing this back and forth it changes her from a uh, turn meter booster to uh insane healer because she'll heal this and then she attacks everybody and heals them as well and then heals again and then heals again you, see, you get the idea she's one of the best healers in the game albeit with a very strange kit all right i think this is my last uh my last pull give me turvold let's go we're gonna get at least one more legendary on this pull here Let's get another epic, please. Or another legendary. I'd be happy with either of those. Okay, there. Oh, Ursula. I don't have her. We're going to take a look at her in a minute. And no. Boom. There's Turvold. All right. So I got two. I got two legendaries out of this. I got some amazing epics. Ursula the Mourner, another fantastic. Oh, and she's Bannerlord, which is a faction that I am um, almost done with in Faction Wars, but working up. So what do we got here? Ally speed and Doom Tower is kind of nice. Uh, revives all dead allies with 75% HP, then fills her turn meters by 50%. Oh, she's a reviver. Oh, God, that's perfect for Faction Wars. Also places 60% increased defense buff, 25% strength and buff on all allies for three turns. Not bad. Um, and then attacks all enemies. Oh, it's going to take a lot of books. Attacks all enemies. 75% chance of place and 50% decrease attack debuff for two turns. Also places 50% increase attack buff on all allies for two turns. Okay. Attacks all enemies. 40% chance of decreasing the turn. Okay, so she's doing a little bit of target uh, turn meter manipulation. Not bad. The big thing, of course, is the revive with the increased defense and the strengthen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. She's not bad. Uh, but there you go. And, of course, I also got Turvold. So that's that's kind of fun. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is is w Would you be happy with these polls like I am? Or, you know, is it... Uh, 
Is there something that you're looking at and you're like, eh? <laughs> oh my god, I knew I was close to. I, I thought I was close to. Um, to uh, mercy rule. So there you go. Um, gotta do my usual things here. I always go to the arena and at least do the reset there. I'll go kill him later after I'm done recording. Um, so after I pull a bunch of champions, I always go into faction guardians. Um, just to see if there's anybody else that, um, I need, you know what I mean? Um, uh, cause I want to make sure that I'm boosting everybody that I can. Uh, rats. Barbarians are good. Ogren tribes. Now I can, okay, I, I'm holding off on this right now. Maybe I'll do this later today or tomorrow. With the uh, artifact enhancement going on, but if I do these, I break, uh, I break man eater with his unkillable. So I need to, I need to regear man eater and slow him down a little bit before I apply that, uh, that one. But otherwise, undead horde, nope. Otherwise, it looks like I don't have anybody else that's going to um, boost any of my guardians. Ah, wait a minute. Why haven't I done this yet? Demon spawn. I don't have anybody that, that needs to, to be speed tuned, so demon spawn, I can do that. I should have done that last time because uh, I pulled um Umbral Enchantment and Trantress bleh, before. So, all right, well, there you go. At least demon spawn is up by, by six, uh, six speed. But everybody else looks like they're pretty much dunsies. So, okay, whatever. There it is. Uh... Close. All right, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as always, let me know what you guys think, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the polls here. I am very much looking forward to building out Inquisitor Shamil. Uh, I am very, very excited about building out Tardiel and Tervold. Um, so so that, should be, that should be fun. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.